Let's get into today's episode of Why We Succeed. That's real. And you know, you and I, we're, we're big on books. And I know when I was going through my own spat with dealing with anger issues, one of the books and the book was way more than just about anger. Like it, it was probably one of the best books that I've read this year, which is Never Get Angry Again. And I, don't, I can't remember if I, I shared it with you that I was reading it, but man, that book was a game changer. Like it has like so many principles, so many gems. And I would just encourage anybody out there, whether you you yourself are dealing with anger issues or you just are interested in that topic, man, that book right there is one that I would highly recommend. And it was so helpful for me during that period of my time or period of my life when I was trying to get through dealing with anger and learning how to properly deal with it. And like you just stated and share with everybody that's listening and watching, you share with me breathing. And, and that helps so much, man, getting meditation apps, starting to develop that habit of breathing on a daily basis. I, I use it now still to calm myself when I'm going through anxiety or I'm feeling frustrated. And I, I really wanted to just thank you, man, for just sharing that because it's so, so true. Oh, you're welcome. Happy, happy to share. Always happy to share. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm curious, were there any personal challenges or limiting beliefs that you had to overcome in order to get to where you are now? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Because I get I get lazy. You know, I get lazy in areas of my life where I'm like, you know what, Calvin, you need to start doing some different things. You need to get get more education mm -hmm. and push yourself forward because there are things that you need to accomplish in your life. So I really had to overcome going back to school. Like I wanted to go back to school, but I had to mm -hmm. overcome getting out of that lazy mindset and to push myself to go back to school and get some different skill and to help myself build some different skills. So yeah, there were, that was some limiting beliefs because I was like, I'm too old. I'm not going to be able to keep <laughs> up those types of things. Right. And your mind can play so many different tricks on you, on you. You know, you're the number one person that you talk to every day. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. You know, and that's, and that's one of the things that I'm really big on is making sure that I check in with myself every single morning when I wake up to see what my thoughts are. Mm -hmm. And if I have some crazy thoughts that are like not, you know, not me, some stuff, mm -hmm. some thoughts that are limiting, limiting, limiting me to do anything that I want to do. I, I turn on podcasts. I go into prayer. I put on something that's going to motivate me and I'll scroll for however long it takes to find <laughs> the right podcast based on the description to make sure that I'm going to feed myself the information that I need to be fed. So that way, when I start my work day or I start my, my day period, Mm -hmm. I'm mentally ready and sound so that way I can push forward and push past any obstacles that come my way. Going right back to, again, to mindset. So, so important. And one of the other things that I wanted to kind of touch on is sharing with all of our, our viewers and our listeners something that I've learned about you that you changed my perspective. I don't even know if I shared this with you, but I've watched you navigate like the corporate scene and intertwine your passion and be able to flip that into new corporate roles without having to leave jobs. And I want to touch on that because oftentimes people believe that you, when they're passionate about something and it doesn't align with the job or the role that they're in currently, that it means that they got to take a leap of faith or they got to leave or they got to go out and, and do something different. And I would love for you to just speak to how you were able to say, hey, you know what? I have these, these interests outside of the nine to five. And then be able to say, hey, what? You know what? I'm bringing this back in. I'm going to add value to where I'm at. And it eventually opened up into an entirely new role for you. Would you mind speaking and sharing a little bit about that with the listeners? Sure, sure. So that's that's something that happened for me, I want to say maybe 2018, working at IBM. And I had, I was at a, we had a, an after work event and it was like a fall, fall event at a restaurant. And one of our HR partners was there speaking. I never met her before until that day. And she just, the, the message that she brought was like, wow, I need to, I need to make sure that I engage with her, have a conversation with her after she finished speaking and then connect with her when we get to work. So I was able to do that. And through our conversation, I was talk I was talking to her and she says, wow, you're very interesting and you seem like you're very passionate and motivated to help people. Who are your mentors at IBM? And I said, well, I don't have any. I said, the only mentor that I really have, which is an unofficial mentor, was my director at the time. Mm -hmm. And she says, well, you need mentors that are in IBM because your director came in, came through, I came to IBM along with you through acquisition. Mm -hmm. So 
she started talking to me about what I wanted to do in my next role that I didn't know. I had no clue. So then she asked me if I knew anything about business coaching. And I said, I don't. I said, but I, I have an idea of what it is. And I think it's something that I would be interested in doing. So I said, talk to me a little bit more about it. So she was like, business coaching is basically you helping someone, help helping them work through any obstacles that they may be going, they, be, they may be going through. Mm-hmm. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be a subject matter expert in that area. It's just that you have to be able to open up, you know, have open-ended questions for them and be an active listener. So as she was talking to me about this, I was like, wow, that sounds really interesting. And she started saying, well, I know the person who created the program within IBM. I'm going to introduce you to her. So I said, okay, cool. So she did an email introduction. She and I met, the the woman and I met, and she was like, I really want you involved in this program. And she gave me more information about it. I was like, wow, this is something that I think I would do real, I would be really well, do really well in and would love to get involved. So it was a seven week program that I had to go through within IBM and I have the certification. So I'm a certified business coach with IBM. And I was like, how can I use this to further my career? Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure it out. And I said, but whatever it is, I'm just going to make sure that I capitalize on this opportunity and push through. The other thing is I was going through project management. I was doing project, I was doing a project management course as well to get uh, PMP certified. And during the same time I was doing the business coaching, but I gravitated towards the business coaching more so than the, the project management course and certification. So I kind of like left that, left that to the side mm-hmm. and I pursued coaching more. So over time, as becoming a, became a business coach and then I became a supervisor of business coaches, which means I'm able now, to, I'm now able to train other IBM employees on how to be a business coach and wow. get them certified. So I did that. And <laughs> then I was asked to speak at our coaching community of practice of business coaches. Now, this is a global organization. Mm-hmm. We have coaches across the world. We have quite a few thousands of coaches. Mm-hmm. So I spoke on September of 2018 or 2019, I think it might've been, might've been 2019. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was 2019. I spoke and, um, there were people from all over the world on that call. And I basically just told my story, like how I'm telling the story now, told my story about even, (laughs) even being incarcerated, going through Mm -hmm. my career, getting my career back and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so many people were reaching out to me after that. It was just phenomenal. So if one person in particular who is now a mentor of mine, he's a facilitator at IBM. So he handled he he facilitates all of the education that IBM offers, mm-hmm. whether it's in person or, or via uh, WebEx. Okay. And he was the very first person that I saw at IBM do that job. And he came wow. to Philadelphia and he was basically training us on how to be managers within IBM. Okay. And from the time that I walked into the conference room and I, I saw him, I was like, wow, that guy's sharp. And um, <laughs> just from his appearance, I was like, he's sharp, right. like hair, clothes, everything was sharp. So if for, for just for the listeners, that's just my thing. I, I love yeah. getting dressed and making sure we're grown. <laughs> um, but um, then he started talking and he started delivering the content. And as I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, I really want this guy's job. And this was, this was 2014, just now becoming a manager at IBM. So uh-huh. ended up connecting with him in September, October of 2019, right after mm-hmm. I did the, that, that talk. Mm-hmm. And I, for the life of me, for five years, I was trying to figure out this guy's name, couldn't figure it out. Mm-hmm. Saw him, we were able to reconnect in five years later. And when I saw his face, I was like, that's the guy. So he and I had a conversation I told him that story, how he made that big of an impact on me and how I said that day that I want to do his job. And Mm -hmm. I asked him on the spot, could you mentor me? And he was like, yeah, definitely. And he was like, I'll, I'll, he said, what I'll do is I'll, I'll introduce you to my, my director. So that way you can have that, have a relationship, build a relationship with him. If any opportunities end up opening up in in this area, you can, you can apply for it. So ended up meeting up with his manager and, you know, everything went well there, but at this point, I had three managers within IBM. Okay. Now we're talking 2019. So then December of 2019, I mm-hmm. ended up going, having a conversation with my first mentor, the woman that I met, who mm-hmm. introduced me to the second mentor, uh, the coaching <laughs> mentor. And I told her, I said, I want to do something different, but I just don't know what it is. Right. So I had that conversation with her and I had the conversation with the other, the gentleman that, the, that's the facilitator. Mm-hmm. I had a, had a feeling I wanted to facilitate, but I was just like, not sure if I was ready yet. So. Okay. 
diversity and inclusion was something that was just like sitting on my heart. And I felt like God said, that's the area for you. That's where you need to go. So December of 2019 had those conversations and they both said, well, why don't you look into, you know, some training? So I found mm-hmm. Cornell University had a diversity and inclusion certificate program. And I printed that information mm-hmm. and I was like, this looks great. I'm not paying for this, but I'm going to have IBM pay for it. And 2019, December, we're talking January 2019, my very best friend, closest friend of my life passed away mm-hmm. five days in the, into the new year. Mm-hmm. And that just set me back. Like it just set me back terrible. But then COVID happened and then right. George Floyd was murdered. Right. And then I had a conversation with my son about mm-hmm. the murder of George Floyd and all the unrest that was going on in the, in the country. Mm-hmm. And I asked my son, I said, so how, how are you feeling? How are you? And he's like, dad, I'm scared. Mm-hmm. My son was my son was 19 at the time. Okay. So that was like, all right, Calvin, you got to you have to do something. You have to do something to get involved to make change happen or be a part of the change happen because right. there's no way in the world my son should be walking around scared of police. Right. So right. I went back to the diversity and inclusion training. I said, wow, I think this is the time. So God was like, yeah, this is the time. I had a conversation with my mentors again, and I told them this is the direction that I'm going to go in. I'm definitely going to enroll into the DNI courses, get the certification, and see what happens from there. Where I just want to be able to make some type of an impact to make change happen globally. Right. So my first mentor was like, okay, cool. But in the meantime, you get your, you get the education, you take a couple of courses, but when you're in the middle of that, reach out to the global DNI leader and just find out what's next for you after you get this certification, whether it's more mm-hmm. education or if there are job opportunities. Okay. And I was like, wow, I didn't even think about job opportunities. So, <laughs> yeah. So I ended up meeting with the global DNI leader, told her my situation, what I was going through. I was getting certified two weeks after she and I had that conversation and she says, wow, okay. So you're going to have that cert. I said, yeah. She says, I have a couple of roles that are going to be opening up. These are some things that you should probably look into. So she started telling me the roles and I'm like, wow, this is interesting. I think I do want to make a career change going from being a tech, a technical manager Mm -hmm. and then moving into a DNI court and a DNI position was like going from, from I, from (laughs) IT to HR. Right. And that's exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So we try to go the other way. (laughs) Right. Right. So I was like, you know what, if this is what's going to, if this is the way God is leading me, then I'm just going to capitalize on that. And that's exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. You know, I was able to use all of the skills that I built over the course of that year. So it was the, the coaching, Mm -hmm. also having my mentor as a, for, to be a facilitator and the DNI training that I received now. And those are things like, these are things that live inside of me. These are part of my gifts and talents that God blessed me with. So now moving out of IT and into HR for diversity and inclusion as a as a uh, senior offering manager for DNI is mm-hmm. I'm doing I'm doing God's work now. Like this is right. no longer work that Calvin is doing for Calvin because that was IT. Yeah. Now Calvin is doing God's work to make an impact on the people globally and that's exactly what I'm doing. I've been in that role since March uh, March 8th of 2021 mm-hmm. and I've met and had an impact on so many people across the world. It's, it's, and I'm not saying this to brag. I'm just saying this. <laughs> no, man, yo, it's a reality. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, beautiful, it, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a reality because right. it gives me opportunity to tell stories and talk about mm-hmm. situations that I've gone through and help build programs to teach people globally on how to conduct themselves in the workplace right. and just to educate people on different cultures, educate people on dealing with racism, educate mm-hmm. people on dealing with being bullied in the workplace. Like it's so many different opportunities that are coming out of this, and it's just putting me in that space to be able to. Do the work, like I said, God blessed me with these gifts and talents, and now I'm able to pour it back into the world and make that impact globally. And that is how I made my career change. I had no idea that I was going to be out of information technology because I'm like, people are like, oh man, you work for IBM. It's like the fifth largest company in the world. You're in the sweet spot and you're a manager there. You're doing great things. But then making this transition over to HR is the best thing I could ever did for my career. Right. So making an impact on people, Mm -hmm. helping people change their mindsets and giving them different things to think about and look at things from a different lens Mm -hmm. is something that is like, you you couldn't ask for that. Right. You know, like you can, you can ask for it, but it's like, man, like (laughs) how, how much of a reality is this Right. (laughs) to make this change? And it is, it is a reality. It can Mm -hmm. happen. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of why we succeed. 
If you value relationships and believe they are the true key to success, be sure to subscribe. To watch this full discussion and gain access to exclusive content, join our Patreon today. The link is in the description. Thank you and we'll catch you on the next episode.